Hey everybody, it's Sean with Sweatpants BI, and this week on the channel, I want to spend some time talking about one of the most commonly misused data, data visualizations in Power BI. It is a native visual, and that is the tree map. The tree map visual, for whatever reason, seems to really have a lot of appeal for people that are newer to Power BI or who are building some of their first uh, Power BI portfolio pieces. And you know, one reason that I uh, suspect for this is that the tree map might be a newer kind of data visual for a lot of people that are building their first Power BI tools. And of course, as all people that are learning something should do, I think that people are just playing with this visual and experimenting a little bit and they're not necessarily aware of uh, best practices for using it. And so because of that, I see a lot of uh, Power BI tools floating out there in social media where uh, the tree map uh, is just a very, very distracting and uh, poor choice for the specific uh, type of report or data that they're communicating. So I thought, you know, with that consideration, since I'm seeing this mistake made so often, let's spend some time on the channel talking about tree maps and, you know, what you should be doing, how you should be utilizing them, and if you do have a tree map, how to fix that, you know, without a whole lot of work, no code involved, to make sure that, you know, if you are using a tree map visual, that you're doing it correctly. I want to be clear, I'm not suggesting that you should use a tree map visual. It's not one of my favorite visuals for uh, communicating data. It, like, uh, just like I, I comment all the time with pie charts, for a lot of situations where I see people using tree maps, a bar chart is the better choice. But tree maps do have one important nuance that I think can make them useful that I want to talk about. So let's jump over to Power BI and talk about tree maps and how to save your tree maps from disaster. So the data set that we're going to use for this is a uh, really simple data set that I've used uh, for actually one of my uh, tutorials, I think, that I posted on the channel a while back. It's the toy sales data set that basically just has, you know, a whole bunch of products and dates for the different transactions. And you can see, you know, how much money different toys are making and how many units of those toys have been sold. And, you know, I'll just go ahead and throw a quick table on here to sort of demonstrate what I mean. You know, so here's all of our different product names. They're, you know, I, I would say not very specific names. Things like Hot Wheels 5-Pack, Lego Bricks, Mr. Potato Head, Monopoly. You know, just your, your standard kids' toys, many of which were very common in my childhood. And then if you wanted to see, you know, how many units uh, have been sold for those different uh, toys, you know, I already have a units measure in here so that I can see, okay, 104,368, whatever color buds are, and so on and so forth. You know, pretty simple data. Uh, this is why this is such a good starter data set for somebody that is learning Power BI. If you want to take that tutorial or something, just look up my, uh, my uh, toy... Uh, data set tutorial. I can't remember what I called it, but go back a few months. It's on my Sweatpants BI channel. But most people, when taking this table, can show you exactly how they're going to vi visualize that. They're just going to go over here, click on tree map, and then they're going to end up with product name in the category field and units down here in values. And then they're just going to say, man, this looks great. What a wonderful tree map. And then they're just going to call it a day and they're going to post it looking just like this. Please, people, do not do this. Because let's talk first about everything that is wrong with this visual from a user perspective. Okay, yes, you can look at this visual and I think it's pretty intuitive that what we're looking at here is the proportion out of 100% that all of these different products make up of the total units sold. So, you know, if this were a pie chart, it would tell basically the same story. It's going to look somehow even messier because pie charts are terrible for this uh, for this particular situation where we have so many values making up our legend, we can't even really fit data labels onto this thing. So, you know, if this is a circular pizza, the tree map is a square pizza that has just been, you know, uh, cut very haphazardly all the way down to, you know, the, the mini basketball hoop, which it looks like uh, we've only sold about 2,600, 2,700 units. So, you know, at the end of the day, it, it, yes, it is technically fairly clear what we're looking at and it's pretty easy to quickly find the top uh, toy that has the, the most units sold and the and the toy that has the fewest units sold. The reason that this is just a poor data visualization is that human beings, we're not very good at evaluating uh, proportions that are represented this way. So when I ask you to get a little bit more specific with the data that's represented here, you know, are you able to tell me exactly how many color buds units were sold without hovering on it? 
The answer, you absolutely can't. Yes, there's a table over here. I'm gonna ask you not to look at that, but if just presented with this visual, you could not look at this and tell me how many color, color buds we've sold. You also could not tell me exactly what the proportion is of color buds that have been sold relative to everything else that's happening here. You know, ask yourself, do you think that this is 10%? Do you think that it's 5%? And are you able to make that evaluation with any degree of confidence here? Uh, you know, if we hover on this, we can see it's 104,368 units. If we go over here and choose to show this value as a percent of grand total, we can now hover over it and see 9.57%. So when I said 10%, I wasn't very far off, but I did have to guess. And I've also built a lot of data visual visuals, so I could tell probably about 10%, but it was 9.57%. Now I ask you, is it easier to come to that exact same conclusion looking at this chart or looking at this chart when I transform this into a bar chart? Now you can click quickly see Color Buds and Play-Doh can roughly the same. Was that as easy to tell over here? Probably, but still, it's much easier to sort of make the comparisons between all of the different toys and the percent of sales looking up, looking at this chart than it was on the other chart. You've got 10% right here. You can easily tell, in fact, instantly that color buds make up just under 10%. And if we add data labels, it removes all doubt. Someone can immediately look at this and tell that color buds and Play-Doh can sold basically the same, 9.6% and 9.5%. So most of the time when people are building this tree map, the visual that would be easier for your users to process is going to be this. Now, the, when a tree map is an appropriate visual to use is when you have some kind of hierarchy in the data that you're, that you're introducing and that you want to visualize. All of these toys are very, very specific. And especially in this particular data set, I'm going to move this over just a little bit. All of these products belong to product categories. And so I'm going to drop this into my table so that you can see I've got several categories of toys here. I have arts and crafts, electronics, games, sports and outdoors, and just toys. I guess these are just the things that couldn't fit easily in one of the other categories. But you can see I've got three electronics, including color buds, gamer headphones, and toy robot. Now, we have a potential situation to use a tree map visual because we have fields in our data set that make up an inherent hierarchy. And you might notice that the tree map kind of tells us that that hierarchy is what we need because we have a category here and we also have a detail section. So you can probably tell that I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this product name since it is more specific than my category. And I'm, instead of putting this in category, I'm going to put product name and details. No change to the visual just yet, but that's going to change when I grab my product category and put it where you would expect me to put it in the category position of my tree map. Now, notice that the data visual is completely retooled. Yes, in my opinion, it's a little bit more difficult now to tell those percentages, but they are down here. And what we're, what we're now able to do is we are able to visualize the proportion that arts and crafts as a category makes up of all of our units sold. And you can see, okay, here looks like it has to be bang on about a quarter of our units sold. Toys make up about another quarter, maybe 25%, maybe 22% of our units sold. And then we've got games, sports and outdoors and electronics. And within each category, we can also see Play-Doh, you know, looks like it makes up maybe about 20 to 30% of all of our arts and crafts sales. Barrel of Slime makes up about, you know, 20, 30% of all of our craft sales. And I'm currently still showing the percentage of the grand total here, but I may be able to change that now. No, I'm, I'm not able to change that to percent of a category total, but that's fine. But just when you're using a tree map visual, please do not just throw you know something into the category and something into the values and call it a day. A tree map visual should really only be used when you've got a couple of hierarchical fields and you have a category and something more specific that you're trying to visualize. This is the way that a tree map should look. Now, the jury's kind of out for me a little bit 
as to whether or not this is easier to read or whether or not, and I'm gonna have to move some things around here, whether or not this is easier to read. So now we have our five categories up here dictating our colors here. We can see color buds and we can see the other, one, other things that make up electronics down through here. We can also reorganize this based on product name. Let me go ahead and also need, I need to add product category here. There we go. This is the visual that I was trying to build. Power BI was having a moment. But now we can at least visualize the same percentages, but we can also group those items based on, uh, you know, the specific uh, category that they belong to. So, you know, this, this is probably my preferred way of visualizing this kind of information, but I do understand that the tree map does have its applications when you have a category and then more detailed elements uh, that make it up. So, you know, this is not the worst way of visualizing this data, but I can absolutely say without any hesitation that this visual is not something that I would encourage you to include in your portfolio pieces. It's sloppy, it's difficult to read, um, and ultimately there are just more effective ways like just using a bar chart to visualize that same information. So if you watch that demonstration and you're thinking, Ugh, I know that I've made tree maps that way, no problem, especially if you're someone who's newer to Power BI and you're just learning the ropes of data visualization, maybe you saw the tree map visual as another cool toy to play with. And I guess even though it's not my preferred data visual, it is a cool toy to play with. And I highly encourage you to experiment and you know see if you can turn what I consider to be a second or third tier data visual into something that really works and amazes your business partners. At the end of the day, you know, Power BI and data visualization, it's all about communicating, uh, you know, in, uh, information. And you may find yourself in situations where tree maps really work for the specific question that your uh, client or your business partner needs answered. By no means am I telling you to avoid the tree map visual entirely. I'm just telling you that I see a lot of people misusing the tree map when a bar chart actually visualizes and communicates the information better. But once again, if you have that sort of hierarchy in your data, where one field of values can be categorized or summarized by another field of data uh, in, in, your, um, in your data set, then you may have an application for a uh, tree map. At the end of the day, tree maps, pie charts, they all kind of depend on the cleanliness of your data and how many values you have uh, across both your category field and your detail field. You may just have more information than can be cleanly and, uh, and sort of succinctly presented in a tree map, but there are situations where I think a tree map is not the worst way that you could visualize things. So I just wanted to make sure that you are aware of really how tree maps work, what their purpose is, and hopefully next time you uh, consider using a tree map, you'll have uh, the knowledge and uh, sort of background on that visual to know whether or not it's the best fit for what you're trying to express in your report or whether or not uh, maybe a bar chart's a better fit. So hope you enjoyed that content. I will see you again next time on Sweatpants BI. Thanks so much, everybody.